Pull up a chair and buckle up. It's the Original Strength Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, the Original Strength Podcast is proud to present to you today, Mr. Mark Shropshire, my good friend, my co-author, and an amazing personal trainer. Mark, thank you for being on the show. A lot. That's a lot to live up to. Hopefully, uh, I follow suit. So, Mark, um, give us a little bit of background. You've been training for 20 plus years. Yep. Uh, how, long, how long have you been training and how did you get into training? Um, yeah, so I got out of, officially got out of grad school in 95 um, and started working in a, in a system called the, for pure, at that point it's called the for pure acceleration, um, which is basically a sprint training program where we used high powered, high speed treadmills. I think right now it's called Athletes Republic or Athletic Republic. Basically it's a high speed um, pneumatic tread or hydraulic treadmill. It's hydraulic, what's with oil? I don't know. I, I was gonna ask you lots of, about oil later, so. <laughs> anyway, it's a high speed treadmill and it's pretty Hazagaza. So at the time, like back in 95, this is pretty cutting edge stuff. Um, and uh, I cut my teeth teaching kids how to sprint. Um, and so me being me, not knowing a whole lot about sprinting, because I was a college pitcher, um, and we just kind of ran leisurely between foul poles. And that's at least what I did. I was not great of a pitcher, so maybe I would have been better if I would have ran sprints. Um, I dove into the uh, bibliography of the, uh, the reference materials that we had for this, this program, and it was you know in largely a lot of, studies done by Russian sports scientists and things like that. And they were all basically detailing how they tapped into the, into the nervous system to make it perform better. Whereas in you know, coming out of grad school, what we had primarily looked at was things like max VO2, things of that nature, maybe some lactate threshold stuff, but it was all kind of more on the metabolic side of things. And so I was kind of fascinated how the, um, with the Russian, you know, with the Russians and the East Germans, Eastern Bloc, Soviet Bloc countries had done was figure out a way to tap into that. Also, with one eye on the fact that they're probably doping big time. Um, but it was just kind of curious. And so, along with that, we were talking about plyometrics. Rest periods were different for max strength. I'd never heard of max strength before at that time. You know, that was just coming out of the heyday of the Nautilus system, where you know you'd sit and your job as a as a fitness instructor at that point was to fit the cam of the machine to the joint to the body. <clears throat> you remember those days and then yes. away we go. And then you'd sit there and you'd count out three sets of 10, check a box, then you'd move to the next station. You do that. So it was very it was exciting. Yeah, it, <laughs> it was such a great time to be in the fitness industry. <laughs> uh, you know, um, so I, I, I was living in Minot, North Dakota at the time, uh, which is a wonderful city. Uh, but I just didn't know anybody. And so I just sat there and I would work and then I would go home and I would just read this stuff and gobble it up. And I worked in North Dakota for about three years and then moved out to uh, Baltimore to take a job out here working for Cal Ripken, doing the same thing, just at a little bit of a bigger level. Um, kept on reading about the nervous system, um, sprint training, because I didn't want to look stupid in front of a bunch of professional athletes because that's what I was going to be training out here. Um, and then around 2002, actually, we are about on my... 20 year and two week anniversary of being in business for myself. So around 2002, I um, created Shropshire Sports Training known throughout the world and kind of continued my studies in education that way. <clears throat> went through RKC, went through Strong First, went through FMS, went through CKFMS, followed that pathway until I got a, a strongly worded email in around 2010, 2011 or something like that that uh, detailed what was going on with original strength. And uh, it just stuck with me to this day. It was, I insist you attend this workshop. I said, you insist, do you? Well, this better be pretty good. <laughs> but it's a good enough hook. And I'm glad I listened to it because within about, you know, three, four hours of laying there and belly breathing and rolling around and listening to you talk and um, listen to Dr. Mike talk at the time. And I think Jeff was, Jeff was there and Danny was there. I was like, all right, these guys are on to something. And it's, and it's super applicable. And that's kind of led me to where I am now as uh, you know, lead instructor with OS and contributing any way I can. That's been it. So 
it's it's your 20 almost your 20 year anniversary of um Shropshire sports training yeah but man you work with collegiate athletes professional athletes you work with different in the in the military different branches of their special operations special athletes i don't know what you call those guys but they're they're real <laughs> real yeah. world athletes not not for just like making points um how how did you find your niche with with these athletes i don't know it's I, I think part of it was because I was working for Ripken, honestly. And, you know, with the name you're working for in Baltimore, if you're working for Cal, um, there came along, I guess, maybe some assumed um, expertise, rightly or wrongly. And when that, when Cal's business, when he retired and contracted that portion of his business portfolio, I already kind of had a stable of athletes that were sitting there going, well, are you, what are we going to do now? And so I was, fortunate really I was kind of in the right place at the right time to start my own business where I didn't have to start from square one with a kid in my garage and try to build it up from there I I had a facility um I knew some people I knew some PT groups uh, and it just allowed me to kind of really grow my business that way so I, I already had kind of a stable of for me I don't know, at the time 15 20 kids and then did good work with them and then it was kind of word of mouth, you know, and if you do a real good job with one or two people, they'll tell one or two people. And if you do a bad job with one person, they're going to tell about a hundred people that you suck. So <laughs> I was probably, you know, at that point I was very, very uh, careful with how I work with people and train them. And I built up a more or less kind of word of mouth is where I got, where it got me. And, you know, working in a PT clinic, you run across people that do rehab, they have kids, they have specialized jobs, you know, police officers, firefighters, whatever it is. And you run into those people doing that. So it's very organic. It's almost like the work sort of found me and I'm just, just kind of in the right spot. And I'm out there in front of people doing it. So they can watch me daily doing my stuff. That's not like it's a closed facility. So you went through all, all the training that you mentioned, um, kettlebells, FMS, uh, OS. Yeah. What was it? you said the stuff that, that you learned in OS made sense, but what was it that, that really hooked you? Like, you know, cause something, a lot of things make sense. Um, I think what hooked me, um, was that it was the simplicity of it really. And how, how quickly I could see and make good, make a positive change, um, in a person, um, you know, given that person's, you know, we'll call it like a neurologic profile how fast it actually worked and that it, I didn't have to, you know, have this piece here and that piece exactly here and put that foot here and tighten this up. And, and it, it wasn't filled with a lot of extra instruction, which, you know, and have, having worked with, I think at that point, people for about 10 or 11 years, sometimes a lot of instruction is, you know, you've been a coach for a while that gets in the way of just authentic movement. And because it was just as simple as, breathing and doing that at that point it didn't really matter to me how it worked i get paid for results so i'm not, i'm less i'm less concerned with following a methodology and then i am with okay what do i what what do i have in my dispense or at my disposal to help this person move better feel better lift more and i saw this with some of the people i was working with like that um I used it with my mother, who was a retired music teacher, um, and it was had profound results with her. She's able to get up off the floor uh, without using her hands. So I'm not going to divulge her age, but she, I'm 52 right now, so she's older than I am, and she can lay down on her back and get up without putting her hands on the floor. And she does her reset state. That was her goal. She's able to do that. I've seen it work with people that were considering a total knee replacement, coming in with just terrible knee pain. And he wanted me to do some prehab with him to get his quad strength somewhat up because they were going to go in there and, you know, remove hardware or put in new hardware. And I said, okay. Um, and everything that his sheet that the doctor gave him to do hurt pretty much anything that we figured out with the original strength to do did not hurt. Well, guess what happened? His knee pain went away. So I like, mm. could walk without a limp and a gait. So like, stuff like that really it's profound. I, I use it with my professional athletes, my baseball guys, helping with their hip mobility, for example. Um, gotten guys out of back pain. 
it just it goes across the board and it's simple easy easy to teach easy to learn um and the the ease of it from my end to my end users that that's what really drew me in there i was like i, I was sitting there watching i don't remember what you guys were doing but it was something and i just sat up there piecing together like all the people i'm working with and i can remember the, the thought process like i can use this on everybody whereas there's some people like it like doing some like things like, like kneeling cross chops or something like that. I can't have guys get down on a knee because it hurts and they've got no balance to balance, you know, be in an inline lunge, half kneeling position. It, it won't happen. Well, what, then what? <laughs> there, there, there was, there, there was no, then what at, for that, for, you know, for that system. Um, but there was for original strength. And so I, that's, what, that's why I liked. Awesome. So, but for yourself personally too, when, when you're on training, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, you saw massive strength gains or strength expression in a very short period of time. I did. So, um, if you remember, I was, I was hot on your trail and I was sending you emails all the time about this and that with these original strength. And you were kind enough to invite me up to, uh, take a workshop up at, uh, was it five points Academy? Up in New York, um, with a bunch of other guys, and it may not have been, or may have, it was, but I looked at this as like, okay, this is my tryout to be an instructor. Get it together. Um, so I was like studying the manual, reading your book about forty times. Like I got to be on point. And um, I was really kind of going through there. Um, I was up, was and still am. I like training with kettlebells quite a bit, and um, was following like the press protocol. I think it's like Return of the Kettlebell or whatever one of those was at the time. And I think I was pressing up 36, 36 kilos, maybe twice on my right hand and a really shaky one on my left here and there. So uh, Coach uh, Coach Steve Holliner and I were there, Coach Fury, and I kind of talked to him about this and that with the presses and we, he was trying to help me with my press. So we were baby crawling for about five minutes at this workshop. I think that's, we just kind of crawled around on the mats forward and backwards, left and right. And you and Jeff and Danny, and we're all just kind of sitting there watching us crawl and talking. And I was whispering with Steve. And so we kind of crawled off into a corner where they had the kettlebells. And this is after a full day of, you know, working out and doing the resets. And uh, Tim, I picked the 36 up and I pressed it like five or six times on my right side. And it's like butter. You know, I, I already knew the skill of the, the press. So that, that wasn't like I had magic skill acquisition, but something was allowing me to take that load that previously was a big time high threshold struggle and it just went up. There's just no, it's, it was easy. And then like, holy cow, I put it down, grabbed it with the left and I got maybe like three or four on the left pretty easily. There was no fight. And then that's when I kind of thought to myself, but man, this stuff is just taking the brakes off my muscles. This is, it's, I'm not, it's almost like I'm not fighting myself anymore. So that's interesting. So would you say OS makes the muscle stronger or is it doing something else? Uh, I mean, yeah, it, it makes them stronger. I mean, they're, you're, you know, you're, you're putting them under load. So there's load and there's tension. Muscles respond to tension, but we, you know, better drive, getting stronger. Um, so in, in this case, for my press and my shoulder, the, I, I equated it to, I probably had a little bit of latent instability in my shoulder because all we're doing is crawling, which is, you know, baby crawling is not hard, you know, for the most part. And my, the, the muscles that were supposed to stabilize my shoulder at the time were getting better and better and better and better at stabilizing the shoulder, kind of getting, the stabilizer ought to get to the movement party first. So that my movement party is overhead. So if my stabilizers are late, or the information that's kind of traveling up to the brain and saying, hey, you want to, might want to stabilize this shoulder because it's going to press something heavy with his delts and his tries, um, improved. So the, I equated to, you know, the input up in got better. So the output got better. So the input, the input kind of fixed the output. So my stabilizers were now stabilizing. And so my movers, for lack of a better term, could move better so they could truly fully express the strength that they actually did have. That makes sense. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, I, and I think you, you probably said it really well earlier when you said you took the brakes off of your press. Um, 
because yeah. you gave you you were basically feeding your nervous system with information that it was looking for, where it, it allowed you to be free to express yourself with your press. I think. Yeah, and then then I, then I started seeing that in other things too. Once I got with following different resets for different things that worked, squatting got easy. Um, felt smooth under load. Uh, it felt buttery. Um, heavy loads were still they were still there, but they were very, they were manageable. I was calm when I was doing it. I relaxed into my strength is what I call it a lot of. Mm. Um, and when I was done, I go, okay, put work. But by kind of pressing reset, breathing through my nose the whole time, using my diaphragm, breathe, and I staying calm, it was easy. I'm, and my, my work output, my work capacity also went up. So it wasn't just like max strength moves and stuff like that as my work capacity got up because I was recovering in between sessions so much faster. So you've been training for 20 plus years. Um, yeah. You've learned how to take the brakes off your, your nervous system. You wrote a book called OS Performance. Uh, how, how we did. <laughs> we did. <laughs> yes, but you, I'm talking to you. Uh, so how, how important is the nervous system for releasing or allowing the body to perform well. I mean, I know it sounds like a, well, of course it's important, but it's, I think it's, a, I think it's priority. Your nervous system is the governor of everything. It, your, your, your nervous system and your sensory uptake and you, you know, basically your hands and the nerves and your eyes and your ears and your nose and your mouth, and the tongue, you know, chemoreceptors, all that, all that kind of stuff. It's all driven um, through the nervous system. So the, it, it sort of makes sense that the stronger or the better functioning that your nervous system is, um, and the, the, in some aspects, the better you are at manipulating different aspects of that nervous system, you're going to get a better output. And so I, mean, I think it's that simple. I don't want to be overly worried about it, but if you have a, a strong, um, responsive nervous system, your body just works and operates the way it's designed to work. And that's without limitations, I think. Beyond movement or along with movement, what are things that can affect the nervous system in a way that dampens or hampers its performance? Stress. I think, I think primarily, I mean, in nutrition, um, you know, I, I look at, I look at stress as kind of an umbrella term, almost like I have a cold that, that cold is caused by, you know, a whole host of different types of infect, you know, infection, bacteria, viruses, whatever. Um, so the, the things that basically affect your body in a negative way you know, are a stressor to the body. It could be, it could be emotional stress. It could be spiritual stress. It could be physical stress and training, um, any kind of job, you know, stress is stress and the body has a very predictable way of handling and dealing with it. And some stress is good. Um, we're just not set up to deal with chronic levels of stress. It's just the same stressor over and over and over, day in and day out. Uh, lack of sleep, uh, for one, is a big, a big one in this country. Poor nutrition is another one. Um, the all pain, no gain mentality in training. You know, I was pushing it. You know, redlining all your training is another. Um, without being able to balance that out, I think those are all big time negatives to the nervous system. And then the nervous system responds in kind by shutting things down because at the very end, of, at the end of the day, your nervous system and your body wants to stay safe. And when it doesn't feel safe, it shuts stuff down. It turns things off. It takes, it takes things away. And like, like movement, for example, it will, your, your movements will digress or regress. Um, if they don't, if you don't feel safe in it, you'll feel stiff. You'll feel awkward. For lack of a better term, if, if the nervous system doesn't feel safe or stressed. So I think, think one of the great benefits of OS is, is that it reverses a lot of that stuff. So I'm going to shift gears because you brought up stress. Yeah. And you're not an island on this, I know, but last year or this current year, calendar year, um, I think we just hit a year anniversary, a little bit longer of the, the I'll call it, for, I don't know how to call it, but like the shutdown um, yeah. for your training business. And 
and then, like I said, I know you're not alone in that. Uh, a lot of people had, that had businesses, restaurants, bars, all kinds of uh, other businesses had to shut down too. But you're my friend and I have access to you on the internet uh, and Instagram. And for a year, I watched you train, um, mm -hmm. knowing that you were dealing with all kinds of you know, stressful issues but you kind of cataloged your training online a lot. And I would just, you know, spy on you just to see how you're doing and stuff. And I literally, I watched you carve your body out of granite um, for a year. And I mean, you look, and, and, I, and I told you one day, you look like, uh, like one of those statues of Hercules. Um, I saw a picture of you training and, and I, I mentioned it to you and you said, well, I really just tightened up on my diet and, yeah. and and I believe you but I also think that you were managing your stress and finding an outlet for yourself to me I think you were you were giving yourself some type of self-care through the training that you were doing um, anyway you say it's nutrition I'm not sure about that but I, I know it's part of it so so just for the sake of that conversation what what does cleaning up your diet mean when it comes to building a chiseled sculpted body <laughs> like that uh i mean for me you know i can just i can just relate my own experience i think if we we're talking to you know five other people in the room they would you'd probably get maybe five different answers with some crossover and similarity um but for me personally and give you a little uh, a bit of a background on it you know so with that with the shutdown uh, my son came home from school uh, from college uh, my oldest son and he's always been very interested in i guess the human body and diet and nutrition and um just listens to a lot of podcasts a lot of good information reads a lot on that stuff and is really into it and I wasn't as much as I probably could have been. Um, and I, he, he came home um, and he's a swimmer in college. And um, he came home and I, and I looked at him working out one day and I saw him and I just, the thought occurred to me, uh, that's half of me right there. And, the, and Ben, Ben has a body that's like carved like out of, like you said, out of the granite. It, it's broad shoulders, narrow waist. You can just see muscles moving on him. He looked, you know, from a physique standpoint, very impressive. And I thought to myself, there's no reason why I can't do that. What are, what are, what do we do differently? Well, I don't swim. Um, but we both lift and train that way. Okay. I don't eat like he eats. So I kind of put my pride aside, you know, like at that, that point, 19, 20 years in the books. And I went, show me what you do. Cause what you're doing is right. You have a body of work and I want to learn what you do better. And so you go, and it's like, okay. You know, like he got enthusiastic about it. You know, there wasn't any kind of like, oh, this is your field dad. You should know this. Cause you know, I have a master's degree in exercise physiology, not nutrition. We talk about it, but it's not deep. And so from a nutrition standpoint, we, he just, we kind of started cutting, not really, I want to say cutting stuff out, but adding stuff in. Then we eliminated things that didn't make sense for me. So things that cause a lot of inflammation in my body. Um, so for that was like grains. Um, I still have bread here, but like having a diet that likes high in pasta, breads, um, added sugars, alcohol. Um, we just like cut them out as a choice. Um, and you know, in any decision that you make, there's a consequence and there's a reward for that decision. And for me, the consequence of say not having a margarita every night after work or at the end of the day during covid because i could because there's no consequence if i want to have four margaritas and i wake up and i'm a little groggy the next morning so what i'm not going anywhere <laughs> you know who cares um but the reward was it, it honestly might, might have been a little vanity but i said i got all this time on my hands i might as well do something positive with it i'm going to work on this and so we, we kind of started moving into more of a high fat, high protein diet, um, training maybe a little bit differently at different times of the day. Um, and just over a process of months, 
it just became a habit. I'm introducing intermittent fasting, um, making my own version of like a bulletproof coffee. Uh, you know, I think you talked to me about at one point about adding some collagen into the coffee and MCT oil and things like that. And I found myself not having cravings for some, like, I, I really like refrigerated cookie dough. That's all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you know, if we, if we would ever have some of that stuff, you know, I, I'd, I'd, be, I'd volunteer to walk around the house at the end of the night to make sure all the doors were closed. And then we kind of like looking around and then going to the freezer and having a couple of spoonfuls of food. And then, you know, and then within a week, that stuff's all gone and it's in my belly. Um, tastes good, but not great for me. Um, so we just eliminated things like that and started eating a diet a little bit higher in fish, um, vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower. And we just bake them, um, you know, stick them in the oven, and bake them up. And I found myself looking forward to it and having like a good nutritious salad. I was kind of, that salad's sort of like rabbit food and you put a bunch of gross dressing on it. And Ben just showed me there's other ways to do it. Yeah, they taste good, they're fulfilling. And he was right, leaned me out. Um, I felt better. I felt a little bit more, like I had sustainable energy throughout the day. No more like, oh, it's three o'clock, I'm tired of dragging through it. And so to me, the proof is in the pudding. And so I just kept on grinding through it. And now it's just kind of how I do stuff. So, yeah, it was, it was interesting because like, you've always looked impressive to me and that's why, like, and I didn't know how this was all going to play out, but months ago, a long time ago, I had, I had mentioned to you about designing a, a program to add, uh, to build hypertrophy in the body, yeah. uh, usable uh, muscle, a um, muscle that looks good, but it also actually does something. Um, and I had no idea though, that you were actually going to carve yourself out of, out of granite, like you had. Um, and so, so now it's like, it, it was just, I don't know. It just, it looked like the perfect, the perfect, uh, timing of coincidences or, or whatever. But, uh, but to that point, you have designed a program for us that, so if you're listening, we had a, a series in on, on OSI online, uh, called the awesome body series and we had two programs already in it one was unlock your body and one was design your body but we wanted and and those are tremendous programs one sets you free to move and then one makes you as durable and strong as 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 you want to be but we thought there maybe should be something else added to it like so for people that want to look good and feel good but also still be strong um because there's a difference i think you can you can look strong but not necessarily be strong um, anyway, so we wanted to, to really balance out the, the series. So we had asked Mark to, to build a, a program called Build Your Body. Um, unbeknownst to me, Mark was really building his body the, uh, the, during that time. Um, so I guess back to, back to that, Mark, is it possible to actually add muscles for show and go? Um, and what I mean, you know, um, so, cause you can like some bodybuilders, they look really huge and, and very strong, but then you've seen those, those, uh, things on YouTube where a bodybuilder up against a strong man and they don't even compare athletically and what the strong man is able to pull off, um, right. who doesn't look nearly as maybe as impressive or as big as the bodybuilder. Why the heck is that? Yeah. <laughs> How does that work? Yeah. I mean, part, part of it's the perception um i think it's a perception in the general public that and maybe amongst trainers too that that just large you know, to a degree it is true you know a larger cross section of muscle fiber is going to be able to produce more force right so up to a certain point that's true but it also has a lot to do with neural drive into the muscle and your ability to create high amounts of force and tension rapidly and if you're a physique athlete like a bodybuilder per se the methodology of training typically isn't like that. You're typically taking things to fatigue. Um, you're, you're working out in a state of being tired a lot. Um, you're, you know, you're doing four or five exercises for your pecs, um, four or five exercises for you know, bicep curls this way, bicep curls that way, bicep curls this way. Uh, where if you're a strong man, you're picking junk up, you're hauling it and you're setting it down and then you're picking more junk up and you're picking it up and, and you're, you have to create a large amount of force rapidly and then you rest. 
um, or like in powerlifting if you're looking for stuff like that. So the, the two the two training methods will get you strong. One is just going to get you really strong, like real world strong, and the other one may be strong, but not that strong. So like when I was putting the build, build Your Body program together, it was really just kind of an amalgamation, a lot of the things that I had done in the the months kind of previous was how I was doing, you know, what I had at my disposal. I had kettlebells, I had dumbbells, and I had a barbell. I'm lucky enough to learn the gym and I got that stuff. So we just kind of put, you know, the Build Your Body program together just using one of those things. And most people have a dumbbell. They have access to it or a, set, or a set of dumbbells or like power blocks are great. And try to, you know, try to deliver um, a product that was um, simple and easy to understand that would also kind of amalgamate the two worlds of original strength and like, like I said, show and go muscles. Um, and how do we do that? How do we put that together? And that's really the, that model was what I had been working on really spring, summer, fall, winter. And, you know, as of yesterday, it's a, it's a sustainable model. It allows a lot of training variability, some auto regulation to it, you know, where you can kind of go as you feel. Um, with uh, and it's there's enough variability to it where uh, at least up until this point, I'm about a year and a year, year and a half of doing it, I don't have any overuse injuries. You know, knock on wood. And I think in large part that's due because I, a of my job and b I'm incorporating a lot of the resets um, into my training that I do. So in a sense, you've really you combined a methodical progressive approach to strength training um, with a dumbbell or a kettlebell and mixed it and com uh, shuffled it together with uh, original strength resets as well. Yeah, it is. Um, and the reason that I did that is I'd, I'd followed kind of loosely other programs. And um, this is going to sound terrible being a lead instructor, kind of like dumping some of the, but just not being as, as um, regular with my resets. You know, time is a factor. All right, I got to go. Well, I'll just jump in and start deadlifting. All right, I got my deadlifts done. Let's stack some pull-ups on top of that. Okay, it's done. And then the next day might be squats and chest presses. Done. But over time, all, all those exercises, while I was trying to gain strength and some muscle mass, I'm standing still the whole time. And your nervous system is nothing more than a mirror to what you do the most of. So when you, like, you sit and you look at yourself and you wonder, why can't I do these things? Or why am I like this? Well, it's because you do that more often than not. It's a simple, you know, for the most part, it's, that's a simple answer. So when you're, when I looked at the training, I, I, I noticed that a lot of the movements are repetitive or doing the same type of stuff. I felt like I was losing my athleticism. Um, like I hadn't lunged for a long time, for example. You know, so in lunging, you're basically coming off of two feet off of a pretty stable base into one leg's out in front or one leg's to the rear and you're less stable. You're more, you're more susceptible to moving through the frontal plane that you got to, you have to control for. And I used to be able to lunge like a beast. And then I went on all these other like squat programs, deadlift programs, press programs, where I just stood still and created tension. And I lost that. And I didn't like it. I like a little bit more holistic, well-rounded, I guess you want to call it that approach to fitness. I'm like, what am I not doing? And what I wasn't doing was, um, wasn't doing the OS enough, um, or enough of the right, right type. I wasn't doing enough of what we call like cementing the X, which is like really tying your right side, you know, like your right shoulder into your left hip and your left shoulder into your right hip on any, you know, front back, um, under load, uh, wasn't strengthening those connections. Um, I wasn't doing enough baby crawling, dead bugs, bird dogs, speed skaters, things of that nature. And I wasn't carrying loads enough. I mean, I wasn't just picking up a heavy kettlebell or two kettlebells and walking with them and just managing loads. And I had done that a lot of that previously, but I kind of fell in love with the numbers game. And as soon as I started doing that within a few weeks, movement kind of started coming back to me. And that's where I was like, okay, this, this makes sense because I'm not moving this way. I have now lost those things. So I just reincorporated them back into my training and then sort of amalgamated those two worlds together. And that's basically what we have is you have a reset section, you have a, you know, let's tie to get the body together, tighter section. Then we can either go through a strength or a mass building section. And then if we want to, 
depending upon what type of training, maybe like a finisher of some sort. Then yeah, it's a it's a neat program, and it reminds me, or it looks like a maybe a child of some of the stuff we we wrote about in the OS performance. Um, but really drawn out for hey, this is how you plug and play it. And I love how you said auto regulate, like you listen to your body still. Um, and there's room inside the program to to adapt to the program, but also for the program to adapt to you as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, your, your levels, um, just to strength levels or parcel everything else out, those can vary, um, you know, around 10% day by day. And they're affected by, by stress, you know, like lack of sleep. Um, you know, we talk about that quite a bit. Uh, and the, your stress levels are going to basically affect your um, your strength and your power output. And also, you know, just the mental mental stress people might be under. You're going to get under that barbell or that dumbbell, that kettlebell. And like, I just don't have the will to do it. Physically, you might be able to. We just don't have the will on that particular day to do it. And at the end of the day, really, it's it, that's okay. I think because we're just lifting a weight. This isn't like the Mideast peace crisis or, you know, people aren't dying and or anything like that because on that day, we decide that I've had enough presses over my head. I've had enough single leg deadlifts. It's okay. So I, I kind of built that into the program because, you know, I was going through COVID. I was kind of, kind of going through my own little ups and downs, a lot of uncertainty. Um, and it's like, you know, some days I'm going to do five reps instead of eight because that's what I got in me today. And then other days, like, shoot, eight's easy, let's go. And I saw so that I would just take less rest in my little, you know, block of time that I allotted. Uh, so then it's, yeah, and that's sort of always, I've always sort of trained that way, but it just sort of started to make sense. And then auto-regulate is kind of the, one of the hot button or hot topics right now in training. So yeah, it just kind of came together. Yeah, it's funny, because, you know, when, when I first saw the program, you know, because I, I think the way you think, um, and I always, you know, I always program a certain way, especially for myself, I'm so much, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm in a recovering OCD uh, trainer. <laughs> um, so I've let go of all the numbers and the reps and the stuff. But that always aggravates people about me. Um, when they want to program, you know, like, well, I want a specific number, or I want a specific count. And so keeping that in mind, I, you know, based off of everybody always pecking me like a woodpecker for that kind of stuff, I asked you, say, Mark, can we give a, a, a finite number for people to shoot for? And you respectfully told me, shut up, Tim, this is my program. <laughs> you can. <laughs> you go be you, Tim, but I'm going to do it this way. But, well, yeah. no, but that was the funny part because I was totally jiving with it, but I was like, oh, People are going to want finite numbers. And I was just trying to, you know, give the people what they want. But I don't think the people know what they want, maybe sometimes. But people need to be told what they want, Tim. That's... So, so clearly, though, like, you know, to give you much respect and kudos, man, uh, again, looking at you on Instagram, your program <laughs> clearly works with, with your combined um, guidance from, from Ben cleaning yeah. up your diet. Um, but one thing I, I, I don't understand is how do you get your muscles so shiny um, when you're training on Instagram? And that's a true testament to your strength, though, because to have that much shine, to be able to still hold on to the dumbbell or the kettlebell, I think really highlights grip strength. It does. And also, Tim, it's, I think it's my mastery of my autonomic nervous system. <laughs> make myself sweat in certain areas of my body and not in others. I... I thought you were going to advertise show glow for us. Now I'm, I'm disappointed. Not sponsored, so I'm not, you know. <laughs> Did you hear that, ladies and gentlemen? If you sign up for the Build Your Body program, we'll send you a free bottle of show glow. I'm just kidding. I don't even, Mark's always telling me about show glow, but I've never, I don't know what it is. I'll train outside in the hot Maryland sun. That's what it is. It's called humidity, is yeah. what you're talking about. It so, uh, Mark, before we go, if uh, do you do you train people uh, remotely, uh, or, or or is is everyone you train in in your facility? No, a majority of the people that I train are in my facility. Um, I do have a small cadre of people that I do work with online um, as well, where we'll write you know either general or specific programs that they have you know specific goals that you get a specific program uh, to the exclusion of other things, obviously, uh, cause that has to happen. But if it's just like a, I generally want to move better. Okay. 
then we'll tilt it more towards like an original strength or an OS performance type of a, of a template that way. So if somebody then, if they want to, they want to contact you um, yeah. and, and have you be their coach, how, what's the best way they can get in touch with you? Probably the best way. Um, I think I'm on the, uh, am I on the OS website as mm -hmm. a trainer? So you could go through that um, or you could go to my website, www.markshropshire.com. Sounds complicated. Yeah, it is. So markshropshire.com. Me. That, dot that URL again is markshropshire.com. Um, but if you do want to check out Mark's Build Your Body program, that is actually going to be available on osi-online.com. So, and it depends on what generation you are. Some people say dash, some people say hyphen. And I used to say hyphen, but that's actually two syllables and dash is actually easier to say. And it sounds like a dash more than a hyphen. So it is hmm. osi-online.com if you want to check out Mark's Build Your Body program. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be pretty cool and um, getting to meet some people. And uh, I think we're doing what, um, bi-weekly coaching, coaching calls. Um, yeah. And in support. Uh, uh -huh. Good point. So if you do sign up for the Build Your Body program, you'll actually get to work with Mark and um, get in on, uh, like, if you need to ask him questions and work, uh, you know, about the program and just pick his brain, actually, um, on on how the program works and or pick his brain about how your body is working with the program. You can actually train with Mark during participating in the program. Yeah, I thought that was kind of one of the neat things about the, like, the rollout of this is, you know, we roll it out, everybody kind of gets started. And then having, um, you know, like coaches calls, you know, probably have one the first week of the program, get everybody started on it, check in in a couple of weeks, be able to answer questions and things like that through that, uh, that format. I think that's good. Um, and sometimes it's just nice to be able to check into people, you know, or check in with somebody um, that kind of holds you a little bit accountable for things, keeps you on point. And no, and it does help. I and mean, it feels like, you know, well, and it is you do care about the people and you do care about their progress. Uh, and that's always nice. Um, and it does come through when you actually have personal social interaction. Yeah. Um, and in COVID times, personal social interaction is a very good thing. Not a bad thing. Not a bad. Mark. Hey man, thanks so much uh, for being on the show and sharing your time with me. Thank you, Tim. And I appreciate you asking me to be on. All right, guys. Hey, if you are looking to build your body with Mark Shropshire, that program comes out the first week of April. I don't know when you're listening to this, but I am sure we will keep this program as a staple because it's part of our Your Body is Awesome series, and it now makes our series complete. All right, guys. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening, everyone. Have a great weekend.